students today a video lecture series uh, renewable energy resources in that we are going to see model 2 solar cell previous class we discussed about what is solar cell and need for solar cell and the components present in the solar cell today's class we are going to see solar cell materials practical solar cells iv characteristics of uh, solar cells efficiency of the solar cells first we will see the solar cell materials so many combination of materials and many methods of fabrication of uh, photovoltaic cells are now either in practical use or in the developmental stage many atom we are using to create the photovoltaic cells pv cells but silicon is the most widely used basic material because it is suitable and available in abundance more than 80 percentage of the solar cells currently produced are using the crystalline silicon based solar cells nearly all of other 20 percent were developed using the uh, amorphous solar silicon cells so solar wafers or silicon wafers have uh, long been a primary base for the assembly so for uh, uh, i mean uh, solar how the solar cells are mad, uh, manufactured in the sense it is manufactured with the help of silicon dioxide SiO2 that is silicon why in the sense the absorption coefficient of the materials indicates how far the light with the specific energy can penetrate through the material before being absorbed that is the main criteria for the solar cell if you use the silicon the absorption absorption coefficient is very high that means a small absorption coefficient that light is not readily absorbed by the material even though that some amount of energy is absorbed so absorption coefficient of the solar cell is depends upon the two factors one is the material making up the cell and the wavelength or the energy of light being absorbed by the device. The band gap, band gap of the semiconductor material is nothing but a smaller one. So upper one is a collector, uh, conductor band and lower one is a valence band and there is a 1.5 electron volt is the voltage required for the moving from valence band to conduction band that is nothing but forbidden energy gap that is minimum energy needed to move an electron from its bound state within an atom to free state so this free state where the electrons can be involved in the conduction so the lower energy level of the semiconductor we use to call it as a valence band the higher energy level of the uh, semiconductor where an electron is free to roam here and there is called as a conduction band and there is a separation between this valence band and conduction band there is an energy gap is there that is we call it as a forbidden energy gap is the energy difference between the conduction band and the valence band so solar cell materials which has the average edge of the absorption coefficient because the light with energy is lesser than the materials band gap so it is not absorbed the free electrons cannot be absorbed the solar cells consist of a semiconductor materials so what are the materials are available in the sense silicon and thin films silicon in the sense which is uh, remains most popular material of the solar cell there are uh, four types of the silicon materials one is a monocrystalline or single crystalline multicrystalline polycrystalline amorphous silicon four types of uh, materials are used for the solar cell so polycrystalline are made of by casting process with the molten slip silicon casting process with the molten silicon is poured into the mold and allowed to set then again the wafers are sliced so as a polycrystalline wafers are made of by casting the entire cells so they are significantly cheaper to produce but not efficient as like the monocrystalline single crystalline cell the lower efficiency is due to 
the imperfection in the crystal structure which results in the casting process. Amorphous silicon is the one of the thin film technology made by depositing the silicon onto the glass substrate. So this type of solar cells can be applied to a film to low cost substrates like glass or plastic materials. And multicrystalline silicon like copper, indium, uh, cadmium sulphide and cadmium tellurium, cadmium sulphide cells, gallium arsenate cells are also used. There are many advantages of the thin film including uh, easier deposition and assembly. It is very ability to deposit on the inexpensive substrates or building materials or the ease mass of production or high suitability to large applications. And other kind of commercial potential uh, materials are all used for the uh, commercial applications. Second solar material is nothing but a thin film. So thin film solar layers or solar cells use the layers of the semiconductor material in few micrometer uh, thickness. Some of the thin film technologies are possible for the solar cells like rooftop solar shingles, roof tails, building facets, glazing of the skylight uh, or atria. So thin film photovoltaic cells made up of CDTE, cadmium tellurium, being increasingly employed along with the amorphous silicons. The junctions are bulky junction with a three dimensional structure. These junctions are very attractive and alternative which offer the very low cost fabrications. So these devices are like a third generation photovoltaic cells where multi-junction devices are used for the various applications. Next, we are going to see the practical solar cells. So, solar cells are now manufactured from number of different semiconductors that is given in here, various cell materials, monocrystalline, multicrystalline, amorphous silicon, copper indium, disalinide, cadmium telluride, gallium arsenide, ribbon ground silicon, over shinky silicon. These are all the various cell materials which are used to produce the solar cell. But considerably we are using that desensitized silicon for the various application especially silicon based system. But if we compare with this different types of solar cells, multicrystalline silicon will give the 26 percentage theoretically but practically it is 18 percentage. And other amorphous silicon 14 percentage theoretically and practically 10 percentage the thin film technology is used for the copper cadmium telluride. Gallium arsenide in the sense 26 to 32 percentage but in practically 18 to 25 percentage. Ribbon ground silicon in the sense 10 to 16 percentage. And this is nothing but 10 to 12 percentage. So there are various types of the practical solar systems, so solar cells, one is a crystalline silicon cell, amorphous silicon cell, cadmium telluride and cadmium indium disalinate cell and high efficiency solar cells. First one is a crystalline silicon cell which will dominate the photovoltaic market in order to reduce the cost. The cells are now often made from the multicrystalline cell instead of uh, going with the single crystalline cell. The crystalline cell silicon technology is uh, established and models have the lifetime of nearly 20 years or more than that and producing the efficiency is nearly 18 percentage. Amorphous silicon solar cells are very cheaper and it forms the uh, form, it is the form of the amorphous thin film that are used to power the variety of consumer products like uh, domestic applications. Cadmium telluride and cadmium uh, indiums are used in the market nowadays in order to promise the combining of low cost and uh, acceptable conversion efficiency. And high efficiency solar cells are used from the gallium arsenide, indium phosphide, 
other kind of derivatives in order to power the satellites in the system operate under the high intensity concentrated sunlight these practical solar cells are used thank you